Yes, my people, welcome back to another episode of Where's My Podcast. Usually, I would go on to say that today we're joined by a very special guest, but we're actually doing something a bit different today. Um, it's just me and Rash. It's just literally just me and Rash. Yo. Rash is obviously co-founder here at Where's My TV. He produces all the content and whatnot. He's our content guy. He is that guy. And me and him are going to have a conversation. We're going to have a conversation that I think is very, very, very important. And one I haven't really seen before. But those of you are kind of locked into to British fashion, not necessarily just streetwear, but British fashion and fashion in general, really, would have seen that um, Cortez celebrated their fifth year anniversary a couple of weeks ago. And when I saw that, when I saw Clint put on his story, I'm like, I kind of had a light bulb mo moment where I'm like, now is the perfect time to have a conversation that I've kind of been having sporadically, but kind of bring it all in together. And that's basically me just kind of saying my thoughts on not necessarily how Cortez have done it, but their journey. Kind their of. journey do you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like what we can actually learn from them, because I think the issue is because we're living, we're, we're experiencing it in real time. Often you don't step back and really take in what people are doing because certain things become Kanye West made um, a really good point. I can't say the other day it was in an interview done a while ago, but I was watching it um, on Instagram the other day, yeah. And he basically was like, he wants his legacy to be that he's forgotten. And you're probably thinking, well, I, know, I see Rash, Rash's face, he's probably <laughs> thinking, where am I going with this, yeah? But Kanye basically said that he wants, when, when you design something that becomes so, I don't know, needed or whatever, mm. it's like people kind of forget who's like involved or who Look, did it or who involved with it. But I kind of hear that though, because even like all the, um, like, high-end luxury brands like Louis, like Gucci and all that stuff, you don't really think, think about, about like, actual people. The, pub, like, the people behind the brand and stuff like that. Obviously, yeah. it's nice to to know and stuff like that, especially with, um, for example, um, you know, Gucci, mm -hmm. when they made that film House of Gucci and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That was proper sick to know, like, obviously how it like um, started and stuff like that. But obviously, nowadays, people don't really care. They just want the garm to look nice and stuff You get what like I'm that. saying? Exactly. That's because yeah. they're, so, yeah. they're so there. It's like they're an ever-present. You get what I'm saying? So, yeah, Kanye was basically saying that, look at the traffic light, for example. Who the hell designed the traffic light? But that's in every single place on earth. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? It's so ubiquitous that you don't even think about, you know what I'm saying, who did it? And <laughs> you're probably thinking, how on earth is he going to relate this to Cortez? But, to Cortez. but the point I'm basically trying to make is, is that Clint is killing it in such a way, and we're seeing Cortez everywhere, that we're not really taking a step back to deep, like, yo, like, this is actually incredible. Like, we haven't seen something like this in the UK anyway, ever, bro. I don't think there's any similarities to, like, um, Trapstar or nah. Or Obviously, think it's tra tra I think, I, I don't know, I think it's a bit different, man. I think it's a bit different. I don't know why. Don't get me wrong, I saw Trapstar a lot. Like, yeah. we've always seen Trapstar a lot, especially being from the area. We're always going to see Trapstar. True. But I don't know, man. I just think, in fact, do you know what? Let me, you're right, Rash. Let's use Trapstar for as, a, as an example. Because when I first started seeing Cortez, I remember I used to think, wow, like, damn, this is Clint's brand. Like, man, yeah. I've seen it in places that I've never seen it before. And it used to elicit an emotional response. Mm -hmm. But now it doesn't because I see it Everywhere. so much. Yeah. And that's kind of, because we kind of, we've grown up in West, we've grown up around Trapstar. Yeah. It's like, it is what it is, it is, isn't it? It is what it is, yeah. do you know what I'm saying? But I think the difference with um, the Cortez kind of, way of doing it or whatever is the kind of marketing that they've done. Mm, you know what I'm saying? Like well. they, we're yeah. feeling them. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, long story short, I want to have a conversation about what we can learn from them as fashion people, particularly designers who are starting their own brand or have their own brands at the moment. And the reason why I kind of also want to have this conversation, Rash, I don't know if you agree, is because I feel like people are just trying to copy Cortez not really understanding yeah. what they're doing and copying. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So for example, when Cortez started doing the circle of logos and whatnot, every man and his dog thought, yeah, let's do it because Cortez are doing it. But Even like all the fast fashion brands as well. Like, you get it. Mm. All of them doing that shit, literally because they saw Cortez doing it, but Cortez are doing it for a reason. Do you know what I'm saying? There's a reason why there is that circle of logo on their jumpers or on their, do you get what I mean? There's, there's, there's a thought process behind it. And it's good to quote unquote like, they say, some people in fashion say you need to imitate until you kind of find yourself. Yeah. But I think when it comes to imitation, you need to kind of know why you're doing it and why the designer or why the brand has done but you it. you feel like it's important to have like a, um, a message behind everything they're doing kind of thing then instead of just, I don't know, like to copy and design and see where it goes kind of thing. And then, because I feel like 
the people get lost in it like they'll copy stuff and it's like what am I actually doing here kind of thing and then it, they kind of like I don't know this is not Rash this is the issue bro and this is why conversations like this are so important bro because it's like everybody's just copying without a direction you see you see Cortez doing one thing so you go that way you see Cortez doing another thing so you go that way so you're constantly deviating from your original path but the issue is you didn't have an original path Cortez and Clint has shown us that he's had an original path. He has a North Star that probably keeps moving as the brand evolves, but he has something there ruling the world. Mm. And every time he goes left and right, he's still going to the same destination. Whereas with other brands, they're just trying to copy their thing. And then they don't know, you know what I'm saying? They don't know where they're going. Do you get what I mean? Which is an issue, but it isn't too much of an issue when you're first starting, because again, you do need to find yourself, but just preempt that preempt the fact that you're going to need to find yourself and really work on the message and the overall goal of the brand so that you don't really have to copy another brand. Do you get what I'm saying, mm -hmm. Rash? But anyway, with all that being said, these are the main reasons why we're having these this sort of conversation, isn't it? And the first lesson I think we can take from the Cortez journey is, I wrote it down as think big and believe. Um, the reason I say think big is because I feel like Unlike many other brands, Cortez represents that in a way that I haven't seen done. Like, like Rash, for example, yeah? Mm. Can you think of another brand that has sort of like a geographical goal in their name? Mm, nah, not even, you know. I'm, trying to I'm proper trying to think. None comes to mind. None. Yeah. You get it? Like where Clint was bold enough and had enough self-belief to be like, yo, this is my brand. I want it to achieve this, but I'm going to call it this. And I'm also going to tell you what our goal is from the jump. Mm -hmm. Like they can't run away from that now. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's almost as if he had such mm -hmm. belief in himself that he was going to put that pressure on himself to, to do what he set out to do. Because that can be a subsidiary goal where obviously it's part of your brand. It's, it's where you want your brand to be. You want your brand to be in every country. You want to have shops here, whatever. Yeah. But put it in the name takes another level of self-belief and it takes another level of bravery. You get what I mean? Yeah. And not to say every brand needs to put something like that in their name or have that as part of their 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 brand sort of ethos, if you want to call it that. But yeah, think big and don't limit yourself. Do you know what I mean? Like, I was making this analogy to Rash earlier. It's like, for example, let's say you're on a journey. I'm trying to, I was going to use the central land as an example, but there was a few... <laughs> Obviously, loads of people wouldn't know what it means, would it? But let's say you're meant to get, let's say you're actually meant to get to the last stop of somewhere, stop Z, yeah? But you only believe that to get what you want, you're meant to go to stop E, for example. You've limited yourself, do you know what I mean? Therefore, you've limited the potential of your brand. You've limited where you can take it. You've limited what you could actually do with it. But for example, I also made this analogy to Rash as well, well, not analogy, but I can't remember what Kanye West song it is, but Kanye basically says, shoot for the stars because if you don't land, if you if you don't make it, you might land on a cloud. So think big, man. Think big like Cortez. Don't limit yourself. Believe in yourself like Clint and, and kind of show that in everything you do, which leads me on to my next point. I think that was a great segue. <laughs> By the way, guys, bear with me. I've never done something like this before where I have to talk this much. You know, I'm usually just asking questions which take about five seconds. So I might, I don't want to say waffle, but I might go on for a bit, but hopefully Rash will edit some stuff out and make it proper. <laughs> but um, there's so much value in personal branding, yeah? Rash listens to every episode because he's there recording it. Yeah, and Rash, <laughs> how many times have I said to these designers, yo, Rash It's important, isn't it? brand yourself bro. yeah it's so important like and the reason why cool t's are the best example to do it is because if you look at clint he's got it down to a t yeah. let's be honest like he has got the personal branding down to a t and as rash and i were walking here um we were talking about other brands yeah and how when we mentioned those brands we rarely mention the people behind them yeah but i mean like playing devil's advocate like mm. but I don't know. I feel like even some of the designers we even interview, like they don't want to put their face or personal brand in, like in the limelight kind of thing. And even like just going back, I'm um, going back to Trapstar. And we might like mention them a lot because they're like one of the first to do it. But they also put like bal um like ballys on and stuff like that. Like they don't show their faces, but yeah, the brand's doing so well, well as well. Do you know what I'm saying? It's so true. Yeah. I 100% agree. So it definitely yeah. is a double-edged sword. Like yeah. But do you think like 
having personal branding is um it's more like it has an, an advantage more than not putting your face out there kind of thing you know you that's a good question I'm yeah. not gonna lie to you. that's a that's a really really good question yeah. i think it comes down to what you're trying to do with your brand yeah. because the chat star point is a great 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 point and a great example because as much as we we think that maybe mikey lee and will don't really quote unquote have a personal brand or brand themselves. Yeah. But in reality, they have been branding themselves. They've just been doing it in a different way. Mm, the the, yeah, the brand before. is Trapstar and the tagline is It's a Secret. secret yeah. yeah. And these these are all covering their faces. True. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. That's yeah, personal yeah, branding, yeah, bro. Sense, Do you know what I'm sense. saying? It's yeah. strategic. They, they know exactly what mm. they're doing. Even the whole concept of the brand Trapstar, Trap, Trapping, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. If you're really doing this, you don't want people to know you're doing it. Do you get what I'm saying? So true. these men have a strategy true. behind it. So yeah. as much as we think they're not personally branding themselves. It is technically branded. It's technically yeah. branding. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. And Clint is similar in the sense that he is there and quote unquote in your face, but he's also not. 100%. I agree with that. You get what I mean? It's like a, he's got, he's struck like a great balance where people might think they know him and he might say this on Twitter and he might say that, but you also can't get too close to him. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? He's done it proper. But the reason I think um, during this conversation we have to mention Clint's personal brand is more so because he embodies what his brand means and stands for. Do you get what I mean, Rash? Like, I think the best example is Clint, his tweets. Yeah. And his tweets from however many years ago, bro. Yeah. Man is live saying, we're going to be the biggest brand. We're going to rule the world. We're going to do this. Blah, 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 blah. And all of this stuff, bro. A man has gone on to do it. Like, yeah. if your brand is saying, we're going to rule the world. Like, you as a person behind the brand yeah. has to embody that to a certain degree. Yeah. Even And you kind of got out like that as well. Kind of get it. You, yeah. have to, you have to hit it. Because, yeah. for example, let's say Cortez was that all the designs were the same, like aesthetically it's the same thing, but mm -hmm. it didn't have someone to kind of buy into. Yeah. It's harder to understand that. How does like how does a faceless brand rule the world? You get it? How? Yeah, true. Whereas let's say you have someone behind, and this leads me on to my next point, like I remember early days with Clint, yeah? Mm -hmm. He would go to LA's, he would go to Paris, and even in when he's in Nige, he's taking pictures of Cortez. So he himself is embodying ruling the world. Okay, he's not going there and putting on pop-ups for 200 people or whatever. He's literally yeah. just going there as a tourist, but he's taking his guns with him. He's taking yeah. pictures. Global. And he's, he's global. You get what mm -hmm. I'm saying? He's doing it. He's not, he's not localizing his brand too much. He's really ruling the world. You get yeah. it? So that being said, personal branding, mm -hmm. I think everybody has to do it to a certain degree. I do get Rash's question, um, obviously playing devil's advocate as to whether... You gotta do what's comfortable with you. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, but you gotta personally brand yourself, and you have to have some sort of strategy behind it, man. And obviously, I I, I work in marketing, and there's something called executive position, is what they call it. So, it's like within, let's say, the more, the more corporate space, yeah, mm. CEOs or whatever are positioned as like thought leaders. So let's say there's somebody who owns a company that sells. I don't know why pens is the first thing that came to my head, <laughs> but <laughs> sells pens, yeah. You would have the CEO of X brand basically writing articles or whatever about the mechanics of a pen. This is what a pen could be used for. Mm. Duh, 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 duh. You'll position yourself as a thought leader and that adds value to your brand. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. People are buying your pen over another pen because they've bought into you. Yeah, true. But I was gonna, but even, I don't know, because that, having a brand and stuff so say for example like let's say like brand a like what if like further down the line you want to pass it on to someone else you see what i'm saying True. like they like then they just want the brand to do well but like say like a hundred years it goes into another person they're not really thinking about the person behind it as well you know what i'm saying True. they're thinking about the actual like the clothing and stuff like that you see what i'm saying but that kind of goes back to the to the like the luxury house points you know what I mean mm, yeah they're real people bro yeah true yeah, <laughs> you they get are, they're, they're they actually real friends. but if you can tell me like obviously um obviously I don't want to get like put like flipping dragging the comments and that but I don't know who the f like who what LV looks like Louis Vuitton Louis, looks like I don't yeah. know I don't know same like deal like I, I couldn't tell you so mm. it's like but I'm but I know it's a household name these these people and I'm just thinking about like yeah, I just know the high-end brands, just see what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 
But obviously, yeah. but I, guess house... it, 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 I guess it kind of depends what direction you want to go in as true. well and stuff like that. That's also true. Like, yeah. that, thank you for saying that, Rash, because yeah. the caveat, everything I'm saying, just know that everything Cortez, everything Cortez has done, you don't necessarily have to do things the same. Mm. I'm just, I just want us to have this conversation so we can kind of discuss and obviously you lot yeah, can all true. comment and interact with us and basically just, just learn from them, man. Take almost like look at the fundamentals of it and see how you can kind of take things from it but make it your own that's the main thing if you have your brand and you don't necessarily need you don't necessarily feel like you need to be the face you need to be like a face attached to it yeah. then so be it you get what i'm saying but, but I, just know yeah. that there is value in it yes yeah, so I, I was just gonna say i was gonna say it but i'm guessing from the point you're coming from is that I mean, it's not for definite, but you think it has more of an advantage having a personal branding rather than just being behind it and have, not having... I do. Yeah. I, I, I won't dispute that. I'm yeah. not going to sit on the fence. I, I definitely do. And part of the reason, Rash, is because the world is changing. Mm, Nowadays... Yeah, I agree. I, uh, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Nowadays, people buy in to brands, not necessarily because of what they offer in terms yeah. of what they're making. Or yeah, I think, I, but I think there's personalities in general. like Because even me, like um, uh, a person we know... Um, um, Josh mm. um, was saying us to ages ago, like actors, like musicians, cool, like they're like you, they're like rock stars, like back in the day, even ten twenty. But now it's that like YouTubers are the new things, and you why YouTubers are a big thing because their personalities, they're nice. relatable. You know what I'm saying? So, like, yeah, I hear it still. Relatability yeah. is, is the key word. You get what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's. I don't know. Maybe also for me comes down to the I, the idea of competition. But let's say there's two brands, brand A and brand B. Yeah. yeah. Brand B and brand A look exactly the same. But the person behind brand A is showing you the process of how he, she makes the clothes. He's showing you why he does it. Yeah. He, she is showing you um, what they hope to do with it. Whereas the owner of brand B isn't doing nothing. So yeah, I heard that. In, in reality, this brand is faceless. Chances are, in my opinion, people buy into people in it. Yeah. So people are more likely to buy into brand A because they feel like they have more of an affinity with it. They, they, mm. can, they, they, they really believe true. in it more, they understand yeah. it more simply because of what this person is doing with their personal brand. Do you know what I'm saying? Things that Clint does, that's like, they're just genius. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Trust, like, you know what he does when that. he does the um, um, babe Clint just posted? The what? Basically, yeah. <laughs> I don't know who would have been the first person to comment it, but there was one time, yeah, where um, Clint posted a picture yeah, and somebody must have said, "Babe, wake up!" Clint just posted. Oh, sh oh okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Clint, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember. I don't remember the first time he did it, but I remember he done it, and he just screenshotted that comment yeah. and put it on his story, in it. Yeah. So then now, once he put that on his story, every time he posts, you'll see about fifty comments saying, "Babe, yeah, wake up!" Yeah, Clint yeah. just posted. Yeah, 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 bro. It's like small, intangible things like that that you can't necessarily attach like a monetary value to but it adds to the interaction it adds to the engagement yeah. it adds to the excitement yeah, like, of like um like meme culture in it like it, he's just connecting that to the brand and everything like that so yeah like, he's un he's understanding it do you know what i'm yeah. saying and he's using his personal brand as a way to 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 leverage that do you get it yeah so yeah personal branding there's value in it again as rash was saying though each of their own if you don't want to do certain things you don't have to do certain things but please do see the value of branding yourself cool do you know what? This one's interesting. So I said, have a tribe and support your people. Mm. I reckon when I said that, Rash is probably thinking, I'm probably a lot of you lot are thinking, well, how do you kind of... But do you, are you like, like more referring to like community and stuff or... I'm referring to community, but not in the way you think. Okay. I'm referring to ones almost like... Oh, sorry. I'm referring to ones like personal community. Okay. So like when I've obviously gone through Clint's um, Instagram and whatnot, I think I scrolled back to like 2015 or whatever. And I'm seeing him and it's so mad, yeah. Cause I remember there was one time I was chatting to Clint when we were younger, yeah. I think we were both in uni at this point. And he was telling me about Georgia Smith before she blew. Oh, okay, yeah. He was saying, yo, this Georgia girl, she's the truth. Like she is gonna be huge, rare, rare. I don't know why we were chatting about it, but we were yeah. chatting about it. And I remember I screenshot, he told me to screenshot it. He was <laughs> like, bro, screenshot this. <laughs> <laughs> screenshot this I promise you we're gonna like, it, yeah, like to you'll, you'll record, see in the future basically you'll see in the yeah, future yeah. innit and I remember that I'd sent it to him and he was laughing about it like yo like damn man was really right about that do you get it <laughs> but the reason I bring up that story is because if you look at Clint's past he was around 
people that he's still around now that yeah. have gone on to to achieve stuff. Big things, like, isn't it? Big things, you get what I'm saying? Obviously, he's been around Sloan for, yeah. for how long he's been around him. They're genuine friends. Um, and Sloan's gone on to do incredible things within the art world and just within culture in general. As I said, he was around Georgia Smith, who's gone on to achieve so much. I don't need to say much about her. He was around, I don't know, you know that producer, Quallum? Oh, okay. yeah, he's from East London. Yeah. yeah, yeah I don't yeah, know how yeah, to... Yeah, yeah. Sorry if, if I'm... Yeah, no, nah, he's, he's lost some views, so he's cold. Them, them two have been guys from young. Like, Clint has shot pictures for him and stuff. Like, do you get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. they're really connected. You get what I mean? Yeah. And obviously, Gable Moses as well. So he's had that sort of tribe and they supported each other to the point where, fast forward yeah. five years till yeah. now... They're still bedrooms. They're stuff. still bedrooms. Yeah. And did you see Clint's Days cover? Yeah. Who shot yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Moses, Gable Moses, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So it's I so guess it's kind of thing with um, you got to surround yourself with the right people in it because mm. now look in it kind of thing. You get it? now yeah. look, and this isn't me saying that. Yeah, it needs to be selective. Yeah, because obviously these um, relationships are organic relationships. But I had to say, have a try, but mainly support your people because these that have supported each other, and now they're in a position where their support has got them to, I don't know, a, another point. In, in life, you get what I'm saying? But successful. do you think it would have been the same if they all did the same thing? Oh, see, see what I'm saying? Because, like, obviously, like, they're all versions and they all do different stuff. So, I guess, not to say if they did do the same things, it wouldn't they wouldn't have turned out to have the same relationship. But, mm. like, because of how the UK is and everything like that, do you feel like if they all did the same thing, they it wouldn't have, like, turned out how it is now kind of thing? Well, that is an incredible question. Yeah. And it's mad how, you know, do you ever have them days where you see different people, but you end up having like the same conversation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was in a meeting earlier and we was basically talking about how it's like, in the UK, it feels like there's just so much competition. Do you know mm. what I mean? No one really wants to quote unquote support each other. Do you get what I mean? What? Because maybe they feel like, and Rash is what I was saying on the way here, where people may feel like we only have one seat at the table. Yeah. So if you manage to sit in that seat, you can't bring any, you believe you can't bring anyone through because there's no other seats for them. Yeah, Even they're going to have to sit on your lap or you're going to have to move off the <laughs> chair. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? Do you yeah, get it? Period. So man aren't really going to, you know, bring people up or whatever. Yeah. But forget that point. I think it may have been different if they were all doing similar stuff. For example, if they all had brands, yeah. yeah. That's neither here nor there. We'll never actually know, will True. it? But they're all within the creative field. Yeah. They saw value in each other. They're cool. They're all doing their thing. And they, 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 I don't necessarily say they leverage each other, but yeah, every, all of them leverage each, each other. other they supported each other. Yeah, you yeah. get what I'm saying? It's got them to where they are. I feel like bringing it back to the point you made about, let's say if they were all designers, like mm -hmm. I also think you can apply the same thinking because yeah. my guy, Nate, big up my guy, Nate, um, Nate Free k has got a brand called 3000 Clover and check them out. Me and him were chatting one time and he was like, he doesn't see the competition because in your wardrobe, you don't have to have one brand. Like, yeah, like, facts. Yeah, trust. Just because you wear Cortez doesn't mean you can't wear Cole Buxton or Trapstar yeah. or Benja or whatever brand you can think of. Like, you can actually buy multiple stuff. So And uh, people want to buy multiple stuff. That's the thing. You get like, it. It's, yeah. your, it's, your, it's your style. You get what I'm saying? You can experiment with it or whatever. It's your identity. At the end of the day, if another brand appeals with who you are at that time, then you're going to buy that brand. You get it? If yeah, it facts. resonates with you, you're going to buy it. So... People don't need to compete, man. And I just hope that upon seeing journeys like Clint's and the people around him, people be more inclined to work together and stick with people and support each other. Yeah. Even when at the time, it's like you're not getting the value from it yet. Yeah. Because we know nowadays in this social media generation, um, everybody's just, I don't know, everything seems so transactional. Mm. You get it, unless you're giving something, unless I'm getting something from yeah, you now, then I don't so. want no parts of you. Nah, man, you don't think like that. Don't even think long term. Think, yo, these are people I genuinely like. I'm cool with them or whatever. You believe in what they're doing. I believe in what they're doing. Bro, let's help each other, man. When you're doing a magazine, I'll give you the gums for the stylist. Yeah, whatever. Trust. You get it. Like, mm. this is how shit's got to be, man. So if there's one thing we can learn from Cortez, that's definitely one of them. So let me get my notes page open. Nah, that's cool, bro. Ooh. I like this one. This is a more, um, this one's a bit meatier. This one's a bit meatier. But I've said, know your why and lean into it always. So obviously earlier on in the conversation, I was talking about um, Cortez obviously wanting to rule the world and that. So that's like, I say the overarching goal of Cortez, basically meaning that, I don't know, Clint wants people, everyone to wear the garments, isn't it? Yeah. But another thing that I think is what, separates Cortez from a lot of the brands right now or all the other brands right now 
is the underlying message that I think goes over most people's head. But I would say this is the core message of the brand, yeah? And Rash, I don't know if you remember, but I was talking to Andy, yeah? Did you see when I put on my Instagram the other day that TikTok? <laughs> but I was basically saying, <laughs> but I was basically saying, um, remember I was like, yeah, I spoke to the Sunday Times <laughs> and the guy interviewed, yeah, you see how I dropped it in the game? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah, guy yeah, interviewed yeah. me and I was- Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I was, <laughs> long story short, I spoke yeah. to the Sunday Times and um, they were basically just asking me like my thoughts of Cortez <laughs> and whatnot, yeah. And I was basically like, as I was on the phone, <laughs> as I was on the phone to them, yeah, to the guy, um, my brother has the Cortez sort of military duffel bag, yeah. And I was like, it's like, bruv, when you're wearing Cortez, when you're holding that bag, you must be thinking to yourself, I can achieve whatever it is that I want to achieve. You get what I'm saying? It's almost like you're a man, woman, you're a person on a mission. Do you get yeah. it? And that's how Cortez makes people feel. Yeah. So Rash, when I said that and I put up that TikTok, if you know the way these Gen Zs were grilling me, <laughs> Bro, what are they saying? What are they saying? What are they bro, saying? Bro, ah, he's chatting shit. Ah, he's glazing. He's glazing. I'm like, blood. At the point, I had no idea what glazing meant in it. Yeah. I just thought, man, stretching it. Yeah, you know okay. I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what it means? What? Oh, you're sucking dick. You're dick uh... riding. I'm like, what? I'm like, bro, this is just the truth, though. And the reason why I bring this up is because um, when I was, when Cortez hit their five year anniversary, I thought, hmm, let me go back through Clint's tweets and see what he said about the brand because I know he's, he's long said what he wants to do with it. But he basically made a tweet where I quote, I want everyone who wears cool tees to feel like they can do and be Rabbit whoever the fuck yeah. they want to be in life. Mm. And he's done it. Yeah. Because I hadn't seen this tweet when I was speaking to that Sunday Times journalist. Yeah. That's just what I gauged from what core tees do. Let's look at their, hmm, what's the first thing I want us to look at? Let's look at their, their marketing, for example. Mm. Guerrilla marketing, guerrilla marketing, in a sense, is, is different. It's not traditional marketing. Yeah, You're not definitely. just getting, I don't know, um, an advert put somewhere. You're yeah. not just getting a, a billboard or something. You're finding different ways to connect with people. You're finding different ways to build that community. Yeah, You're finding different People ways. want to be involved in stuff like that. Like, Would you say, sorry? People want to be involved in like all the marketing and stuff like that. So I think the first, like very thing, first thing I saw, um, and he was like, oh, if you man follow me, no one's getting a t-shirt or something like that. And then he, I think it was something in Soho, innit? And then, yeah. And then he's like, I, every man wait there. And he ran off and Ed, oh, everyone Emma chased said, oh, him yeah, in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, yeah, that was the first one I saw how I think it was. But mm. again, Rash, that speaks to my point where Clint was doing things that went against the almost rules. like the rules yeah. of, of marketing to a certain degree. It's like yeah. we hadn't seen things like that before, especially in the UK anyway. Yeah. No other brands were really doing that. He had seen the status quo and was like, nah, where I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to do it this way. And if you want your brand to make people feel the way he said he wants people to feel, meaning they can do whatever the fuck they want, then you kind of have to do that yourself. And he has done that through everything. Do you know what I think is another great example of that, Rash? Do you remember when Cortez first kind of started, yeah? I don't know if they still do it, but when you ordered stuff, yeah. you would get like, <laughs> like the old school porn stickers. Oh, no, I swear that on. Yeah, like- Oh shit, I didn't even know that. And people sick on their laptops and shit. <laughs> And <laughs> the reason why that's so important for me to mention is because, I don't know, maybe some people didn't realise why Clint was doing that. Maybe they thought he thought it was a practical joke or, I don't know, he just thinks it's funny. But porn, obviously, is something that isn't... I was going to say it's not popular, but obviously everyone... <laughs> boy. Boy, boy! <laughs> <laughs> obviously, it is. But the point I'm trying to make is it's not something that you're meant to, to talk about. It's a, it's a taboo. Do you yeah. get it? It's a, real, it's a real taboo. And if Clint's brand is promoting that, he's already positioning the brand as something that goes against the rules again. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. He's literally getting man to put porn stickers on their laptops. Man is... <laughs> let's say you're a student and you're in a university lecture. And you see that, innit? And you see that. Mm. You're thinking, bruv, what brand is this? Who, what type of person <laughs> is this? This person not following no rules. This yeah. person do, does whatever the F they yeah. want. You get it? I've sworn so much in yeah, this. Nah, but I feel like um, so sorry. people like that. You know, it's the feeling of like, because um, you know, like, like you saying it, like people like to, people, when they follow the rules and stuff, they're like, oh, it's safe in it. But this feels like onto it feels like out there kind of thing. And it's you just get like, it. People like um, having the feeling of like, um, I don't know, I don't know what the word is, but it's just like, 
I don't suspense or not the suspense. It's just like, um, I don't know, man. Mm. But yeah, I get where you're coming from. You get the point yeah, I'm trying to make. It's yeah. basically like that rebelliousness. Yes, that's the word I was looking for. That's the word I was looking Cortez for. Cortez yeah, have yeah. been a rebellious brand from the jump, and everything Clint does, everything they do, has represented that rebellion. It's represented that anti-establishment, anti authoritarian ethos you get it mm. and that aligns so well with gen z's because that's what they're on you know right yeah nah, these are, for, bro, yeah, these yeah, are all no respect or yeah. no respect of man you know nah, trust, trust. you get it and i love that about them they mm. have said to themselves forget gen z's anyway man i give them too much credit especially after they was <laughs> grilling me on tiktok but <laughs> again <laughs> yes so clint knows his why and he's shown it in so many different ways. Let's look at the guerrilla marketing tactics, for example. So yeah. obviously Rash brought up the brought up the Soho one. Remember Rash when I did the post about, um, in your opinion, what's your favorite um, court, court marketing money done? Yeah. yeah. Get, do you know which one they said? Um, all right, let me guess. The well, one. I think you'll get it right first time. I think so. Yeah. I I want to say the, um, the recent one, but. It's either this one or the Golden Square one they done. What? Seriously? Yeah, I think it's, it's either the football one, the crossword challenge one, or the uh, Golden Square one. Okay, well. Yeah. Well, what did they say? Yeah. Don't get me wrong, the football one, yeah. a lot of people said that, but the main one they said was Great, great Bono Exchange. Oh, shit, I forgot about that one. Forgot about still. it. But now that I said it, it makes yeah, sense. Yeah, I hear it still, yeah. Because... That was, I can't lie, like, that was good for so many reasons as well. Because, like, especially because they donated the jackets as well and stuff like that. Like, yeah, yeah no, that was sick, though. You get it. That's, yeah. that's, and it's funny you said the donation thing as yeah. well. Because when I was interacting with people in the comments, I was basically saying, don't just say which one you think was the best. Say why. Yeah. And when people were saying why, when it came to the Great Bolo Exchange, they were basically saying, oh, um, it was such a genius idea. But then a lot of people also went on to say it wasn't just the idea, but it was the fact that it had a social good attached to it. Like yeah, the fact try, that yeah, that's what, yeah, yeah, for jackets real. Jackets yeah, and yeah. Um, donated it to charity and whatnot. So man got fleece stuff for their jacket or something. Yeah. Like <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I hear it still. The reason I bring up this activation in particular, because I feel like it's it, it was a great embodiment of this sort of rebellious, no fucks given, no Fs given, um, no rule having attitude that Cortez have embodied. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't think people deep the significance mm -hmm. of what Clint did, yeah? Bro, there was people bringing Nocta jackets. Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rash, there was people bringing Nocta jackets. If you don't know Nocta, that's Drake's brand with Nike, basically. Yeah. So the value for that brand doesn't only come from Nike, but it comes from the biggest artist on the mm. planet, arguably. And the biggest apparel brand on the planet you get it right. so their value from a perception standpoint is there also the price i don't know how much nocta jackets retail for at the beginning but on the resale market it's a maza it? it's a maza mm. you get it clint said to people come and bring your puffer jackets and you can get a cortese bolo so at this point rash were, they, were the jackets even out you couldn't buy them yet no you couldn't you not. couldn't buy them no. i don't know how much they, how much did they retail for one eight or something like that I, I couldn't tell you. I should have checked. Yeah. But anyway, they were cheaper than Noctar jackets and whatnot. So Clint Livo came and said, I don't care how much you bought your North Face jacket for. I don't care how much you bought your Noctar jacket for. You're going to come and you're going to do this and you're going to get my jacket. My man basically said, <laughs> my jackets are better than these jackets. Yeah. Like, bro, if that doesn't represent, my jackets are better than these jackets that are from the biggest brand in the world from the biggest artists in the world, from here, from a Burberry jacket, from, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Brands that have been entrenched in history. My man, this new brand, who at that point would have been like three years old, has come and said, yo, you need to give that jacket to get mine. And yeah. people did it. I was literally just gonna say that, cause I'm thinking like, like if, cause I guess other people thinking about how, my, why does my man think I'm gonna trade in my jacket? for this kind of thing but people, people did it bro like, yeah. and it went viral because it was so shocking that people mm. did it yeah. but the reason people did it was because again Cortez have been leaning into their why in every single thing they do they don't have to follow the rules they're always going to do things different so people people never know what to expect from Cortez because of that but they've built a community that allows them to do activations like that. And the reason they've been able to build that community is because whether people like it or not, 
the people wearing Cortez, whether it's subconsciously or consciously, feel how Clint wants them to feel, which is, I ain't got to follow the rules. I'm going to do what I want. And I'm go more importantly, I'm going to achieve what it is that I set out to achieve. Mm -hmm. And that's the core tease community, especially in the early days where you would be wearing it and you'll see somebody else wearing it and you'll give them a little nod or something. Even when Fem was on the podcast, I remember he's talking about he was on, he was in New York or something and he was at the top of the tower and he's seen an American Donnie wearing oh, it. Or on. And they're looking oh, at each okay. other and they're smiling. You get it. The fact that Cortez have gotten so huge but still have managed to keep that energy, yeah. it is because Clint and Cortez have lent into their why. The fact that he, the fact that he even did some stuff in um, was it France as well? And the same effect. Bro. Yeah, like that was even, and that should show you like that raw in it. Like. Rash, thank God you mentioned that because I didn't even have that in my notes. Mm -hmm. But all now we hadn't even spoken about the Francis, the Australians. Yeah, the, I was gonna say Australia, but I was just certain. Like, but I know he did something there. Australia, yeah, the yeah. Lagos. Yes, you get it? yeah. And the reason he's been able to do that and Cortez have been able to do that is because the message is universal. Mm. How can you not want to buy into a brand that makes you feel like you can do whatever you want? Yeah. If it makes you, when you're young and you just want to be a rebel, if the brand makes you feel like you can go and smash up somebody's car, you're gonna wear that. <laughs> you're gonna want to smash up the car wearing it. But if you get to, if you get older and you start to have dreams and ambitions to do certain things, and those brands, that brand makes you feel like you can achieve those, not necessarily because you're wearing the brand, but when you're wearing the brand, you start to embody that idea of yourself, then you're gonna wear it. So like, for example, Rash, when I spoke about that TikTok that I made, yeah, people, when I made the point about the Cortez bag, yeah, yeah. somebody was like, somebody trolled and was basically like, oh, you're ruling the world with a Cortez bag or something, don't make me laugh. And I said, you know, <laughs> and I, do you know what I said? I said, but what if there's a laptop in that bag, which there probably will be, and on that laptop, um, you're a designer and you're graphic designing um, your brand and your brand then goes on to do whatever it goes on to do. Because I was like, mm, arguably, yeah. Clint has ruled the world from his MacBook, bro. Mm, mm. You get it. That's okay, what I'm saying. Bro. People don't understand. They need to think mm. deeper about stuff. Do you get what yeah. I'm saying? But I'm coming for these Gen Zs, bro. They're going to finish <laughs> me after this, but I don't care, bro. I'm outside. All right, cool. Cool. And, oh, okay, that's annoying. I basically said my next point already. Well, what is but like community is key. Oh, okay, yeah. Community is key, man. Again, going back to the, to the messaging of Cortez, people have bought into their message. And that's why Clint has been able to do things and Cortez have been able to do things the way they've been doing it. Mm. You get what I'm saying? That's why they can do the 99p cargo thing and people can come out and have a fun day out and feel like they're part of something, yeah, feel like they're part right. of something bigger than them. Yeah, I can't lie. With the marketing, like, I'll be real, like, I don't know any other brand that's kind of like had that, that's done that type of thing. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, even the crossbow challenge, like, what, like, who else has really done that? Come on, like, if I was like, like I'm thinking if I was like 13 to like 18, bro, like, I'm going in. Be innit? there, like, innit? You see what I'm saying? So, man will be yeah, there, bro. I when I was respect at, um, like where they're coming from in terms of like the market and stuff. Like, in terms it's of incredible. That, yeah. It's incredible. When I was at um the 99p cargo thing, obviously, I didn't try and get the cargoes and whatnot. I was just there as a, as a, as a spectator going there to support, yeah. just taking in, yeah. And I was saying to myself, I asked myself, if I was that age, would I have gone to something like that? Yeah. And I was like, of course. Yeah, definitely, man. Yeah. What do I, what did I have better to do? Yeah, trust. trust <laughs> no, let's be honest. Me. Man's going to go there. Man might get some Cortez cargoes. Man might see some girls. Man's going to yeah. be there with my bedrooms. Of course man's going to be there. Trust and me. how many brands are giving young people the opportunity to do that? Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Cause to some older generations that look down at Cortez. So for example, when Clint was doing all the when he they had the 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 porn motifs, the porn imagery and whatnot, yeah. I remember Clint would put on his his story, um, people's mums saying, Can you stop sending things like this, blah, 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 blah. And Clint would obviously kind of laugh at it. So older generations would look down on yeah. brands that kind of cultivate. I feel, like, I feel like that the that I think that might be even smart in, in its own way because it's kind of like reverse, reverse psychology because like you're, you're, like as kids, your mom's not going to like that, but that means that you're, like you're going to like it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, so Clint overstood it. You get what I'm mm. saying? So as much as older people won't like that sort of branding, young people are going to love it. And the other layer to it is that, I remember when I was speaking to the, sorry, when I was speaking to the Sunday Times journalist, yeah, <laughs> I, basically, <laughs> I basically was like to him, bro, them 99p cargo activations and all the activations... Clint has done like don't just look at it on the surface look at the fact that it's bringing people out in a way it's bringing young people out for something so pure and powerful and the police have no reason to stop it yeah 
It's just young people congregating, trying to get cargoes. It's not them Hyde Park water fights where people are getting nanked. Yeah, it's not bro. that. It's young yeah. people coming together and Cortez have a community that young people will come out for and they'll remember those days for the rest of their life, bro. Mm. They're going to look back on those memories and be like, yo, like, remember when... Imagine if your bedroom won the cargoes. Oh, my God, you won the cargoes. Yeah, Man's yeah, coming to school bro. and he's telling the story of how he won the cargoes, bro. Yeah. Like, no brand has ever made, allowed us to do that. Yeah, you yeah. get it? Even me, like, obviously, like, when we were younger, we didn't really have anything like that. But, obviously, me, like, I love trainers and stuff. Sneakers, crepes, whatever you want to call it. But I used to go to something called Crep City, innit? Mm. And um, we used to line up for that stuff as well, like, and then it's just, like, um, obviously, you go in there, you see crepes you can't really buy in the store. Like, it's that kind of excitement and feeling that, obviously, they have cause he's probably giving these kids as well. And stuff it's like the exact that, so. same feeling, bro. Yeah. It's the exact same feeling. And we have to, we have to applaud that, do you get it, and support that as quote-unquote older people don't get me wrong I'm, I'm not old but i'm older than a lot of these youths like i'm happy for them you get it and i'm happy that there's a brand that allows them to express themselves in such a way do you get it allows them to feel unrestricted do you get what i mean mm -hmm. um and speaking of community okay everybody that listens to this podcast watches this podcast knows that we bang on about community all the time in it and me saying community is key i don't want to say it's a given but it is key in it it's, it's important yeah, and cool. Um, how have how has Cortez built that? I've basically already said from you know the, the the strength of their message, yeah, but also the authenticity. And Rash, thank you for bringing up the crossbar challenge because I remember when I made the post about the crossbar challenge, I was like, um, bro, I played me and Clint played for the same football team, bro. Like man's <laughs> been yeah. doing crossbar challenges. Clint's been on that. You get yeah, that's I, I feel real. Like, but yeah, oh, sorry to call you, bro. I feel like that's like like majority of like man them or even girls like they, they done when they were kids in it like oh who's going to go and do a crossword challenge you, you have to we all did it flipping i don't know like you you do a crossword challenge when you're playing ball in it like it's, it's just it brings you back as well kind of thing as nostalgia well. yeah, element yeah, yeah, you get it really brings you yeah. you know what i'm saying it brings you back to the childhood just to yeah. it's authentic it was our authentic upbringing it was an authentic experience and it's interesting because rash people like us did the crossbar challenge yeah. but Probably the majority of the Cortez Do you know, community, no. if you want to call it that, they they maybe have never played it. Mm. A lot of them could have been rugby playing that with <laughs> jumpers as as try lines or whatever. Do you get it? Like, yeah. but the reason I bring it up is because as a as a brand owner, as a designer, lean into what's authentic about you. Do you know what I'm saying? Because as much as crossbar challenges have been ever present for us anyway, why has it taken this long for a brand to do something like this? Yeah. Brands are releasing things every single day. Yeah. Like, why have they not done, why, why have we not seen this before? And again, the Nike collab was the perfect way to kind of do it. We've yeah. all worn Nike football kits. We've all worn Nike boots. I was telling man, I would have went in my total 90s, bro. Yeah, bro, throwback, man. Throwback, bro. you get it, bro. That's what Cortez did, man. They, they, they brought back that nostalgia element. Clint showed us uh, a, a part of his journey without having to come on and talk about it which is another thing I think people can listen to can can take from as much as we have this podcast and um, obviously I want people to come and speak about their journey and I think it's so important there are other ways to get your message out there do you know yeah. what I mean it is through your, your, your activations it is through the way you personally brand yourself so yeah community is key and try and build it really try and build it what's next on the agenda be bold either through the designs or the articulation of your message. Um, Rash, do you remember when Cortez first started popping up, yeah? Mm. Do you know what I think was like the first piece, yeah, that really made people, I don't know, what, take not notice. say take note, but... Or think. I, think I, maybe, let's say take note. One of one of the first pieces that made people say, yo, this brand is... Is not necessarily here to stay, but this is brand. This is a brand I want to pay attention to. Yeah, I would say it's their joggers. Think so. That had the. Oh, uh, with um. The Cortez dotted everywhere. Yeah. Oh, oh, that, oh, that thing. Oh, well, oh you was thinking about the circle. Yeah, no, but I was, even, I was, I would even say that. You know, personally, I think it was the t-shirts. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. 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 Good point. Because um, what was it about the t-shirts? I don't know. Because obviously they did it bare different colors. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why. Yeah, but. It made me think like the Power Rangers. <laughs> That's <laughs> funny. So for different reason. I don't know why in it, but um, but yeah, because I remember they did some mad mocking for that one as well, and it was like instantly. I was like, mm. yeah, but I don't know. That was, that's just me though. Yeah, no, no, for real. I, I was gonna talk about the t-shirts as yeah. well. The reason I brought up the joggers, um, 
in relation to this point. Wait, wait, sorry, sorry to cut, but you know what he's just talking about? The one where it's like, it says rules the world. Yeah, and like, bond the rest and that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was literally about to say that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's why it goes back to um to being bold. Yeah. Obviously, within the streetwear space in particular, it's like, um, there's lots of brands. There's mm. lots of brands. And one way to stand out is by having a bold logo. Do you get what I'm saying? That means something. Yeah. And also with your brand messaging, putting that front and center. Man really put bun the rest <laughs> yeah, trust. on the back of a t-shirt. So when man is walking past someone, and someone seeing bun the rest on the back, they're thinking, what the hell? What kind of clothes? Why are you telling me to bun myself? Who's the rest? Is it me? Is it the other brands? Like, why are you bunning people? Do you get it? But that's part of Cortez's energy. That's part of what the brand means. It's such a bold, prominent message. And that paid such dividends into how we perceive the Cortez brand today. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Because it was so bold, because it was so out there, because of the bright colours, baby blues, for example, mm. baby pink. Cortez green got man to that. wear that, yeah, bro. Trust. Mm. Baby blue. <laughs> Rash, baby blue, bro. <laughs> Deep it, though. Cortez really got man to wear that, fam. Yeah, that's Crazy. Mad, that's bro. mad. When they, I only thought of that now. That's why I'm so shocked. Like, they got man wearing baby blue and baby pink with the Cortez symbolism dotted everywhere, bro. It's nuts, man. But yeah, be bold. And the reason why I said through the articulation of your message is because let's say okay, your streetwear brand is, or your brand or whatever, you don't want to have things that stand out too much. You want it to be more subtle. You mm, want yeah. um, there to be smaller motifs that kind of run through your your pieces, your designs, or whatever. So I, I'm that, that type of person as well. Like, I'm more yeah. sophisticated as well. So, so, yeah. yeah. So you don't have to have that. You get it? You yeah. don't have to have that. But a way you can kind of, what's the word? Accommodate for not having that is by being bold in how you articulate the message in different ways. Do you know who I think is a really good example of that? Who? Jack Harper and Nosa with Eliza. Yeah. Because obviously, Jack's kind of done both in the sense that um, he obviously has the big, their logo is so wavy as well. Yeah. Has the hoodie with the big logo, you get it. And that's part of the reason why he's done it. He wants it to stand out. But also because Eliza is such an, it's such a pertinent message and yeah, I remember him saying that um, the uh, the familiar the like the sense of having a logo that you see all the time. Um, so I remember he, the podcast we did um, with him. He's like his logo. You see that logo everywhere you go. Like when you go like toilet. toilet, yeah. When you go this place that, but you see it everywhere. So it's like you're familiar with it. Do you know what get, I'm saying? Get so, and, that, and yeah. obviously Eliza have done well in getting a logo that we're kind of making a logo out of things that we're already familiar with. Yeah. Whereas Cortez have done it differently. They put the logo and the branding so front and center that now we're familiar with it. Do you get it? Yeah. But yeah, so Jack Harper and Nosa, they're sick in the sense that they talk about, obviously they got the Eliza Truth page, but they really talk about their message. So they articulate their message through both the designs and through the way they speak about the clothing, whether it be on the podcast that Jack did with us or Jack doing a lecture somewhere or Jack doing an interview with somebody else. He really speaks about that. So, about that. so you do need to do what it takes to get your message out there. And to be fair, Clint's kind of done both just in different ways. Yeah. He, it's mad because he's kind of done it without even have to without even having to talk on a platform. Yeah, I hear it still. He's done it, he's lived it through how he is, through what he's achieved, through what he's got, the type of pictures he takes, the tweets he's put up, you get it. But be bold with your messaging and articulate it however you want to articulate. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm so annoyed that that's the last thing I, writ I wrote down because I feel like there's so much more that I can say, you know? Yeah. Some would say that like um, other brands might have like a better quality of clothing and stuff like that in terms of like the cotton and everything. But do you feel like because of Cortez's marketing and stuff like that, it's, that's more important than the quality of the garments. It's a, it's a, it's a, that's a really, 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 really good question. And I think it's, it's a very layered one it's a, and it's definitely a difficult one yeah. to answer. Yeah. I think with streetwear brands in the early days anyway, if you're from, I don't want to say from the streets, let me not say that, but if you're, if you, I don't know, if you're just a normal person, yeah. you kind of give those brands grace where if you're buying a t-shirt for X amount, you can't necessarily expect it to, mm, to feel yeah, yeah, I hear it. like, let's say you're buying something from, because then again, even Gucci and LVs and all these places or whatever, these luxury fashion houses, a lot of them, when they do their graphic tees, it's shit quality as well. Mm. You get it? You feel me? But yeah, you can't necessarily expect things to be 
feel a certain way for a certain price. So I feel like as consumers, we do oh, subconsciously right. give those brands grace. But going back to your point about the marketing, yeah, when um, with Cortez and how they've done their marketing, the message is so powerful that many people or most people that maybe feel like the quality isn't all there, they give them a bly because of how the clover makes them feel. Mm. You get what I'm saying? So the oval brand has kind of allowed them to not necessarily neglect that because they haven't. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Quality has improved, but it's allowed them to not have the same level of quality as a next brand that is known for its quality. But yeah. Cortez doesn't, they don't, they, they don't put their quality front and center. They don't, they don't market themselves as the brand of the best quality. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So. I mean like, but say if like someone's starting a brand tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. It's kind of like, what direction do you kind of go in? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, um, do you focus on like the garments, like making sure it's correct, make sure it fits like this person, mm -hmm. like make the make make sure the way it drops on 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 you is is all good and stuff, or do you just focus on like having making sure like the, the message is there, like the um, do you know what I mean? Like yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, and everything like that. I personally think at the start anyway, the message is more important, more important okay. than more anything. Important. Yeah. That's my that's in my personal opinion because as I said, people are gonna give you a bly to a certain degree, and also expensive, good quality clothing is expensive. Yeah, you get what I'm saying. So when you're mm. first starting, you may not necessarily have the funds to get the best, best quote unquote quality. So yeah, uh, you just that that doesn't that does, that shouldn't put you off from starting. You get what I'm saying? Because yeah, over yeah. time, the quality will improve naturally. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You yeah. find a new manufacturer, you find new suppliers, and you work on your craft to understand measurements and all of this stuff, and things get better. So when you're first starting in fashion, particularly from a streetwear perspective, acknowledge the fact that a lot of the consumers will give you that grace. You get what I'm saying? Especially if we're young people. Yeah. Bro, like, we'll buy something to wear at once and get rid of it. Yeah, I'm not an advocate yeah. for fast fashion. I'm not saying that, but yo, this is just, this is just the way she is. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? But yeah, no, it's a good question, Rash. I'm not gonna lie. So what what do you, what do you think it is about the Cortez brand that has made them so successful over the past five years? Then yeah, just bringing it back to like what we've spoke, spoken about. It's just like because I'm trying to I'm trying to look at it through a lens of like if I was like 13 to 18 kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Like you said, no brand has has made like the community or like a whole demographic like involved within their brand like it they make you want to be involved with with them and everything like that so i don't know like it's just like yeah they make the, they've made people feel part of, mm, of something kind of thing yeah part of so, something bigger than yeah themselves. exactly yeah, so 100 and obviously you obviously other uk brands they haven't really tapped into i mean some have now but i only, I only feel like they ha i'm not gonna say who but i only feel like now they have because they've seen Cortez do it yeah, kind of thing yeah, yeah. not to say they couldn't have done it before but I feel like you've got to kind of stay in the game kind of thing <laughs> do that type of stuff but um, yeah I think that's a really like big factor of their success and everything like that so yeah they've involved in yeah exactly therefore another thing people can learn from and another thing I wanted to say I was going to write this down but I hadn't but also be patient because Five years in the grand scheme of things isn't a long time. Yeah. But one thing I always admire about Clint is that he didn't take shortcuts. Mm. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't take shortcuts. This isn't me saying that. But I do feel like once you have that North Star, you you need to be willing to 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 get there in the right timing. You get what I'm saying? You shouldn't yeah. necessarily rush it. And how I think Cortez have kind of shown that is most brands, or well, a lot of brands anyway, Rash, they rely on the influencer marketing sort of aspect of it. Mm -hmm. So they'll give out freebies and whatnot. And there's nothing wrong with that. If that suits your brand, then that suits your brand. You know what I'm saying? But with Clint and Cortez, it was very organic where the people we're seeing in it bought it. Or yeah. stylists, stylists bought it and got it. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Every man and his dog was reaching out to Clint saying, yo, coming." Because obviously, I remember there'll be times where Clint would put up things like, I think even was it was it David Getter? Oh David yeah, Getter yeah, yeah, yeah. His daughter as well. Yeah. And said, "Yo, can I get some pieces or something?" Yeah, he said, yeah. Go on the website. Yeah, yeah. And speaking about the patience as well, I think another thing that I don't don't necessarily connote with patience or associate with patience is having hustle. And I think if we finish this conversation without speaking about Clint's hustle, we'll be doing it a disservice. We'll be doing him and 
you lot a disservice, man. But obviously, I know Clint, so I know some of the things he's been through, whatever. Um, and I know how hard he's how hard he's worked to get here. Do you know what I'm saying? And I feel like it's unfortunate that eventually, when Cortez is still around an X amount of years, yeah, some people might look back and be like, they they won't necessarily truly understand what it took for Cortez to get there. Do you get mm. what I'm saying? Because now it's at the point where man have to give Clint credit. They can't not because of night collab. Do you know what I'm saying? Anything yeah. that they've done. But yo, Clint has really had to work for this. And all the posts that I put up about Cortez, I always make sure to say in the captions and that, yo, even in the the original post I did for the five year thing, my little subheading was like, this did not happen overnight. Because I don't want people to to see Cortez and see what they're doing and just think, yo. Was man, it overnight success kind of thing? It was over because it yeah. really weren't, man. Yes, five years in the grand scheme of things is a short space of time. But mm. yo, Clint put in them 10,000 hours, bro. Yeah. I remember there was one time he came to do a shoot in the end, yeah. And I remember I had come home from work, bro. Knackered. Knackered. Mm. Obviously, where's my TV had started at this point. And I'll say, I'll be honest with you, I used to fake work, bro. I'll get one little post out and be like, yo. Man's done for the day. You get yeah, it? Like, right. I've worked. So, you get it? Yeah. And go and watch something on Netflix or something. Do you get yeah. what I'm saying? And I remember on that day where Clint done the shoot, obviously it was in my block or whatever. So I've, um, Clint's doing the shoot or whatever. And he's like, he's seen like one little crease on something. Yeah. He's like, oh, Jay, I beg you come into my house. And I beg you let me come to your house. And iron it. Iron. You get it? Yeah. And it's just small things like that, bro. Yeah. Like Attention to detail. Attention to detail. And it's interesting because perfectionism is a double-edged sword in a sense where it's good to seek perfection, but you also need to understand that you don't necessarily need to not put something out if it's not perfect. And the reason I say that is because if you look at the aesthetic of Cortez, to some, that's not perfect. You get it where some might say the, the cargoes are too baggy or this or that. To many people, it's not perfect. But that is the, the perfect aesthetic that Clint wants. Yeah, and yeah, he was willing to make people wait, make the shoot longer just to come to mine and iron one little crease out of something, bro. Yeah. One little, I couldn't even see it. I was thinking, what, bro? Why <laughs> but obviously when he's gone and done that and I'm seeing the hustle, I'm like, bro, how can I not yeah. work, bro? Mm. Like, how can I not, bro? And it's that, it's that attention to detail. It's that hustle. It's that belief in his vision. It's that belief in what the brand can actually do for people that's got Clint and Cortez to where they are today. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's just it's, it's it's a beautiful thing to witness, man. It's a really, really beautiful thing to witness. And I'm so happy that um we've had this conversation. Yeah. You know, it may not get the most views, but there may be a point in time where people are studying this shit in school rash. Yeah. They're gonna come back to this conversation and where they're do gonna you think, um, us in their essays. Where do you think he'll be in the next five years, kind of thing? Oh, that's that's an incredible question. I'm so happy you asked me that. Because yeah. I, I I think I thought about that before, man. I think I thought about that before, man. Because as Clint will say, if you tell him there's there's so much more that he wants to achieve, yeah. I think obviously naturally we'll see more activations in different parts of the world. Yeah, Literally definitely. See I think I'll see activations that everywhere, bro. Yeah. I also think Cortez will put something structurally, something very tangible, something that is impact led in place that will further their message. So if part of their message is you can achieve um, whatever it is you want. This isn't me saying Cortez are going to have a school or something like that. I'm not saying anything like that. Yeah. But I think it's well within their remit to maybe make like a creative hub or something like that in okay, one part of the yeah. world. It doesn't necessarily have to be London or, do you get it? It could mm. be anywhere. But I do see them doing more community-led stuff because I definitely feel like Clint cares about that stuff. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. And he does care about the young people that are buying the brand or whatever. And he does want them to feel a certain way. In terms of the brand in general, it's only going to get bigger. It's oh, it's um, it's it's getting set in culture. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. I can imagine Cortez having a proper record label. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I can see that it makes sense. Just all encompassing. Yeah, okay. Hey, so it goes to different industries and stuff different like that. Different industries, yeah, bro. Do okay, you get cool. it? Because yeah. I think with the dreams that Clint has and where he sees Cortez going, not to say fashion can only take you so far because it's always going to be fashion, but. Mm. Band could do more than that. Yeah, but I feel like in loads of industries, like music will take you to fashion, like um, fashion will take music will take you, fashion will take you into music and stuff like that. Like it, like it all interchanges and stuff like that. Yeah, so, I'm saying it's yeah. interchangeable. So, where where do you think they'll be in the next five years? Um, yeah, I think they're definitely gonna have more have like I think they're gonna do bits in America. Oh, I didn't even think of that. Yeah, I think. I think definitely they'll do things in America, especially because um, 
I don't know, I feel like they, they've tapped into like Europe, they've tapped into like Africa, Australia and stuff. I feel like that's, it makes sense, that's the next place to go kind of thing. Um, and I feel like, like um, you kind of said previously, so obviously I had made the point about like the quality of clothing and stuff. I think that's going to vastly improve as well. 100%. And everything. Um, but yeah, I feel like once they tap into America, I think that's it for them. Like I think yeah. they're going to, it's going to, I think it's really clicked in already, but I feel like it'll, they'll take it to a kind of another level. Oh, kind another of thing. level the, yeah. the way that they're going now, why not, man? Why not? You yeah, get it? Man. Why not? Yeah. And you know, I've also thought about in terms of the future, I've also thought about Clint's brand, yeah. On one post I did about Cool Tees, my brother commented that was like, for the Pharrell post, yeah. Yeah, I think I saw that. So, you yeah. see when he was yeah, like, I oh, Clint should have been creative that day. <laughs> yeah. Clint should have been creative director. And I always thought Ooh, about, okay. I always yeah. thought about what Clint's perception of the luxury fashion world is mm. and where he sees Cortez in relation to it. And the reason mm. I say that is because if you've positioned your brand as anti-establishment, you position your brand as, I don't know, for the culture type thing. Yeah. Align yourself Does it make with sense? luxury fashion to some may not make sense yeah. because it's something that's considered to be so elitist, yeah. so exclusive. Some, are, you know some yeah, because you know how people never like, oh, you sell out all that stuff and everything. Exactly, you get it. But, but it's interesting because I do feel like I would want to see something. Like I'm not necessarily Clint. I'm not necessarily saying Clint as creative director of LV. But if we look at where luxury fashion is heading, with the the idea of um, the pseudo sort of celebrity designer, mm. it's hard to look past people like Clint, in the sense that he's got an incredible brand. He's got an incredible personal brand. If Clint aligns himself with something, his value will go up. Yeah. It now anyway, you get it. So yeah. it's like he could potentially do something like that. But also the reason I don't know, man. I've, I've been thinking about this. Not not to say a lot, but like sometimes I feel like do Cortez need to align themselves with luxury to get to like another no, level? Yeah. Because the mm. fashion infrastructure at the moment I, like, is I, no. So go on. Yeah, and no, I kind of bring to a point. Obviously, like um, obviously if you're on Twitter stuff like you've probably seen, but. The, there was an altercation you kind of had with another person that owns another brand. Mm. Um, and that other person was basically trying to say, like, you can't... What Basically, what you're doing is not sustainable. Mm. Um, and obviously, I don't know. I kind of see from both mm. points of views, but do you feel like that person kind of had a point? Or do you, do you feel like, nah, like, he can still manoeuvre how he wants to manoeuvre, mm. kind of thing, to get to, like... A, a, like a bigger level kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm not going to sit here and say that I I have a brand and I've made mm. X amount from being within fashion and whatnot. Yeah. That's just not the truth. So my perspective on this, please, it's just my perspective. It's my opinion. Um, I don't have all the answers in it. I think it is sustainable in the sense that from when we spoke about the next five years of Cortez or whatever, mm. like their, yeah, the, um, their course, the brand's going to get bigger. Clint's always going to make his money and whatnot. But the reason I think some people come with that argument that you mentioned is because when we think of the brands, fashion brands are almost like set in stone yeah. and have become all encompassing. They tend to be luxury brands or they tend to ha they tend to have had some sort of connection with luxury fashion. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, for example, if we look at um, Supreme, mm. obviously everyone knows Supreme. Supreme's lit. It's always going to be a streetwear brand or whatever. Yeah. Um, their collaboration with Louis Vuitton has helped them True. to a certain degree. True. You get what I'm saying? Being aligned with a brand like that has has put them in, not necessarily in certain rooms, but has crafted their perception to certain people. And it's, it, you get it, it's had an effect in it. Yeah. So sometimes I think to myself, rah, maybe those Cortez need to do, not necessarily a collab with a super, super luxury fa fashion brand, but will one make sense? Yeah. And will it help them? And I think one will make sense. And I think one will help them. It's just... If depends they on pick the I feel right like it brand. depends on the message and stuff like that. Like, you get it. Yeah. You get it. But it's like, I do, I, and I, I do kind of want to see something like that, man. Mm. I want Clint's design skills to be tested in a sense. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because naturally, bro, he started this as a young man. You get it. He still is obviously a young man, but he may get to the point where he wants to design things differently. He wants to do this. He may want to have do a, a, a runway show somewhere or something like that. You get it. Yeah, and I think yeah. he should be allowed to do that. And I think, for example, if we look at the Oranges of Supreme or whatever, the original Supreme community, you'd probably be like, what the hell? Like, why would you do a collab with LV yeah, or whatever? But, but, uh, but the, the brand majority, evolved, man. The brand evolved. Mm. You get it. And yeah, so Cortez could evolve 
I would I wouldn't say they'll become luxury or like luxury streetwear. Yeah, I'm not saying that, but there's room for them to evolve in that sense. I would maybe like to see what something like that could look like. You get it? Be it's interesting, man. But also, it's almost come like it's something we've never seen before. So it's like you got to see how it plays predict. out, kind of thing. You got to see how it plays out. Mm. I feel like we just have to kind of enjoy the journey. You know, keep celebrating it, keep taking inspiration from it, and. Yeah, man, just 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 keep enjoying the ride, man. I'm not gonna lie, Rash, man. Like it's it's just a pleasure to witness, bro. Trust. You get it. It's given us something to talk about. <laughs> yeah, trust. Yeah. Trust <laughs> it, you get it. But um, unless you got any other questions, Rash, I can nah, wrap man. up there. You know. Yeah, definitely, man. Good conversation, though. Trust, man. Trust, man. Yeah. Put someone on the mic and that. Yeah, no, Rash, you've done your thing yeah. still. <laughs> Even maybe you should start doing the interviews for <laughs> me, though. <laughs> them questions. But, um, <laughs> Would you think I lied, Trust? Me? Yeah, yeah, but maybe, really. Well, I can't lie to you, but I was loving them. But, um, yeah, obviously, all you lot, thank you for listening. I'd love to hear your thoughts and whatnot. Um, so, please, interact with us in all the comments and on TikTok and whatnot. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, just, just just chat about these things, man. Because there's so many incredible things going on in fashion, but not enough conversations being had, man. I want to learn, man. I want people to show me different perspectives. You know what I'm saying? Like, I hate being in an echo chamber. And if you're just talking to yourself, you're in an echo chamber. And I can't do that. You, man, need to tell me something. You, man, need to put me onto other brands. You, man, need to just... We need to talk, innit? So, yeah. Um, thank you for listening. Um, thank you for watching. Look out for the next episode. Like, share, subscribe, comment. Keep it locked. Thank you for watching another episode of Where's My Podcast. If you ever want to take in future episodes on the go, you can find us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Whilst you're there, please leave us a five-star review. It would really help. And also, don't forget to follow us on our Instagram, WMTV underscore LDN, to keep up to date with the latest goings on in UK fashion. Keep it locked.